Ladies and gentlemen, we're here. Tim's final confessions. I've got like the classic three piece lineup, I guess. We haven't, the three of us haven't done a video since I don't know when. And uh, we are here representing the Chris Army. And uh, so, of course, it's been up for quite a long time. We're here to talk about 10,000 volts, <laughs> the latest from uh, Ace really um and uh we're gonna get into it we're gonna get into it track by track but some of you might be thinking wow it's album's been out for quite a while why are you just talking about it now well um we put the blame on me um i didn't even this is so stupid guys i didn't even know if i was gonna buy this when when I first started reading about it because ace Every time there was a quote about Ace, it just it just uh, was just made me more and more. Ugh. I know it's publicity, but it just everything was about. I don't even remember now, guys. It was like you know, this is the best album ever. This is way better than Kiss, and oh yeah, my fans are smarter than Kiss fans. And just <laughs> every time he opened his mouth, it just it, it you know, if my hand was reaching for the you know the order button, I was like, yeah, not yet. Um, so I wanted to let time pass because, um, the most important thing obviously is the music. And, uh, so, you know, I've had a little while to live with this, uh, album, but Ace really needs to stop with the, if, if, if his music is so good, it should be able to stand on his own. Like, why does he need to drag Kiss into it now? You know, they're not even active. So... I don't know why does it bother it, 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 to quote Mike Patton? It shouldn't bother me, but it does. So I don't know. What do you guys? What did you guys think about the the whole pre-release and the and the press, everything that Ace was saying leading up to this? It made me not want to buy this, which I haven't yet. Oh. Um, and it made me just not want to listen to any. Any time I saw Ace headline, I just ignored it. Like I saw the other day, he said that. Eric Singer would have been way happier playing drums with him in the band than Tommy. Like, it's just irrelevant. The album was already out. It was unnecessary to just keep... Like, it was basically just, let's see how many sales I can get from just bringing Kiss into the headline. And, like, the Kiss fans are, aren't as smart as my fans. Like, they're not, like Ace has any fans that don't like Kiss. Yeah, like, like, I, I've, like never met that, I've never met that person. Oh, well, I like the Fraley's Comma stuff, but I'm not a KISS fan. That person, I'm sorry, that person does not exist. Ace it just fans are KISS fans. You awesome. Know? Yeah. Um, what was the other thing he said? Like, even after, like, you know, the we're going to talk about the collaboration on this album, but Steve Brown from Trickster had a lot to do with this album. And Ace acted like he was surprised by that. The, Dude, you must have hired him. Like, I don't, it just, it just doesn't make any sense. That's why, like, you know, we do these Zoom calls and I, and I send them out. I always try to give them a little clever title. And I called this one Ace Says the Darndest Things. So, um, anyway, that's neither here nor there now. Um, but we're here to talk about the album 10,000 Volts. It's uh, Ace's first album of um, all originals since what, Space man in 2018 am i right has it been that long yeah uh so yeah it has been a little while and um we'll show you the uh let's get into important stuff like the packaging oh yeah <laughs> so you know so he's not exactly going with the spaceman theme this time but he is he is leaning into the shock me thing right um the cd itself is kind of cool it's got this Know what you'd call the saw blade design on it or i suppose probably lightning bolts repeated but yeah anyway um so yeah this album uh was produced by ace and steve brown and to bring you know another late 80s band into this it was mixed and mastered by bruno ravel or ravel i don't know how you pronounce it the bass player was the bass bass player from uh danger danger but the defiance am i right about that yeah um so let's get into this track. Well, maybe we should talk about some of the personnel. Like, there's some familiar faces on here, but um, we were just talking off um, off camera that 
guy named David Julian, who's a, a multi-instrumentalist, and Steve Brown and Ace play a lot of the song, the tracks on this album. But um, Anton Fig is on here, you know, a old, fa old, old face from the past. Let's get into this track by track, guys. Uh, see what you guys think of this. The title song, 10,000 Volts, kicks this off. What, what do we think? I'll let Will take everything first. Go ahead, Will. Okay. Oh, well, that's okay. Um, 10,000 Volts was the first single. This came out, was it right after the Kiss final show or was it slightly before? Yeah, it was just like uh, this came out on November 28th, the first single. Yeah. I think the Kiss final show was like first of December, fifth of December, or something like that. Well, yeah. within some so, weeks, yeah, a few weeks, yeah. So it to Ace's benefit came out right when Kiss is like we're done. Everyone's looking for something new. You know, it's not going to come from Kiss, but it's Kiss related. So he did well in that. Um, I didn't really listen to the single until the album came out, but this is a very catchy song, like. Very cool guitar rhythm. The pre-choruses are excellent, and I sing along to an Ace song. I know that's kind of weird, but like the solo sounds classic Ace. Um, it starts off quite lovey-dovey. I think that's a reoccurring theme through most of this album, but it's practically a concept album, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think the album starts off good. It's a good opener. It's a great title track choice. Um, I actually like the song. Yeah, I agree with everything Will said there. Um, a couple of my comments. We're going to get a really positive album out of Ace this time, I think. And uh, 10,000 Volts is pretty indicative of the kind of tracks we're going to see on here. There's not a lot of uh, darker material, a lot of real positivity. So this one so far has been his most popular uh, song from this album released a video he's really excited when he finally got a million views for something on ace freely's youtube channel uh as of recording this it actually has 1.2 million views that's crazy yeah um actually interestingly his most uh second viewed video is still fire and water the one the, that he did with uh Paul. yeah yeah um david julian features a lot on many of these songs he's a a songwriter i think Looking at his credits, I think he's from Buffalo and is now like a songwriter in Nashville, which we've we've heard about. I mean, practically most of the writers we know of connections are moved to Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. And he's uh he's written with Jack Russell's Great White and, and that sort of thing. But yeah, I, I echo everything that uh uh Will has said about this song. Uh Tim mentioning the whole uh, kind of concept thing. Um, I was wondering if, if most of these songs are about his uh, current partner, Lara Cove, who seems to keep Ace in check, and uh, they like to do shopping at Walmart videos together. That's a fun little yeah. social media yeah. thing. So, uh, <laughs> Tim, what do you think? Good... I like it. I, I, yeah, it was catchy. You know, like I said, I, I didn't pay any attention when the video came. I was just like, yeah, just Ace, you know, give it a rest, man. Um, but yeah, when I got this, I got the CD and I put it on, I'm like, yeah, it's good. It's catchy. I don't know how much of, you know, I, I really don't know how much credit we give Steve Brown for it, but it's well-produced. It's a good sounding album. Um, I guess, you know, the only one thing I would like to, and I've said this, I think every time that we've, we've reviewed something from Ace is that I just really wish that he had another vocalist okay not a, not instead of but just someone to not even half the tracks just break it up and that isn't to say that his his vocals are necessarily bad on here i mean anybody that you know we're all kiss fans i mean ace was never ace was never going to take paul stanley's place as being the best singer in kiss but he you know back on his 78 solo album and dynasty and unmasked he was kind of hitting a little bit of a peak as a vocalist if you listen to something like talk to me or um or uh, hard times or you know uh but i don't know if it's his voice has gotten deeper but it always sounds like 
it sounds like they recorded the, the music and I'm going to use old school LP terminology. And this is just going to be for the tracks in general and I'll leave it alone. But it's almost like they recorded the album in at 45 RPM, but Ace's vocals, even though they're in key, are at 33 RPM. Does that make any sense? They sound slowed down. I don't know. I just think another vocalist, not Todd Howard, but another vocalist might have, like when he did Origins Volume 1 and, and Scott Coogan, the drummer, would take the occasional, that was a welcome switch up. But anyway, yeah, 10,000 volts. It's super catchy. And the, the guitar solo is very ace and it's well captured. And yeah, it's off to a good start. Off to a good start. Next up, we have uh, not a police cover, but it does kind of have that, not reggae, but it's got kind of a, an interesting beat to it. Walking on the Moon. Will, what do you think of this one? Uh, so I, actually, this is the first song that I noticed these like dragging vocals where it sounds like it's slightly behind I just what i'm down. saying just what i'm it saying it sounds like he's singing in moon gravity not and the music's in earth gravity like it's like oh. so it's, so uh, it's on purpose those videos of the astronauts <laughs> bouncing on the moon slow is like a singing uh <laughs> yeah the guitar in this song sounds like really muddy to me like lost like it's not crisp and clear like ten thousand volts um i just think the song's boring oh okay <laughs> interesting not what um, that's that that's i'm getting the impression that one of his favorites what do you think of this one matt uh i i think i'm i'm agreeing with will again it's it's probably maybe my least favorite song on the album but it, i I, I feel like the album gets better um yeah. tim mentioned yeah, the interesting kind of beat on this one. Um, Anton Fig is on here throughout, but the, the drummer on this song, particular song is a guy by the name of Jordan Canada, and I think he was in a band called The Adrenaline Mob. So uh, we're going to try and point out some of the different uh, musicians playing. Uh, I had a really funny time uh, picking out a couple of the drummers here. We'll get onto that later, but because their names are kind of similar, but... Uh, I also again agree with Will here. The whole laughing on the moon kind of slurry language a little bit. So um now walking on the moon. Um when I wake up, you're all I see. You got me walking on the moon. Another song about Will uh excuse me, about Ace's partner. You saved me from disaster, you made my heart beat faster, blah 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 blah. Gonna hear a lot of that stuff on this song. Um I Again, not my favorite on the album. Yeah, I agree. I I think it's one of the weaker tracks in the album. Interesting. It's 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 right up here at number two. You know, usually you front load it, but anyway, next up, Cosmic Heart. So now we're getting into now we're now we're into space. Just go back to Walking on the Moon. Isn't there also a video for that? Like he must have thought this was one of the best songs. Yeah, that was uh, the second video that came out. It came out about February second. Is uh, on the video for that came out, yeah. It is neat to see Ace doing. I think we have four videos from this album now. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. It's cool. He's he's you know, there's this effort. <laughs> That's all I can say is this effort. Um okay. So Cosmic Heart, just like ten thousand volts, we're back to the cleaner, heavier guitar riff. You lost the muddy and you're back kind of with some vocal energy and not monotone like we're back to 10,000 volts energy there's nothing to world changing about the lyrics they're pretty simple but I mean it's ace um yeah. but I also like this song uh I really like at the very beginning there's that kind of spooky 50s UFO intro very quickly and then um it kicks right into uh David Julian is doing this synth work on here it's got some really powerful uh, since I wrote down, I actually thought this song would really kill a lot. Uh, this is one of my favorites on the album. Um, now, another person, Joey Casada, does drums on this, uh, not to be confused with Jordan Canada, who did the drums on the previous song. Uh, Joey is actually a member of the Trans Siberian Orchestra. He's toured with them for about 13 years. So, yeah, I really love Cosmic Heart. What did you think of it, Tim? I like it too. Yeah, I like it too. And and I hope I, you know, this would be a smart move. I'm sure he's going to do 10,000 volts, 
uh, in his set. But I hope he adds more than just one song from this. You know, give it a shot out there. Don't and 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 lose lose Love Gun, lose the Paul Stanley. Like, play songs that I know you want to play some Kiss songs that everybody knows, but you know, play Cold Gin, play Parasite, play the songs you wrote, play the songs that nobody ever gets to hear. And this would be a good one to add. Um, next up. We're going to go back into kind of the singing in 33 RPM. Cherry Medicine. <laughs> now, this is actually one of my favorite songs on the album. Uh, really catchy. And I also like Black Leather. So there's that. Um, yeah, this is super catchy. Obviously carries on the Aces in Love theme. I figured like that's almost every song on here is just how much can I love something other than, you know, drugs or alcohol? <laughs> um, but yeah, I like how the solo goes into the chorus. It's short, effective. It's good. It's catchy. Another one I like. Yeah, we've got, so this is the third video that came out from the album. This one came out also in February, about three weeks after the on the Moon video. Uh, you make me feel better when you're in your black leather. <laughs> This is Happy Ace playing a Happy Ace riff. Um, Anton Fig is back on drums here. And I'm kind of surprised personally, surprised personally that this hasn't been as much of a hit. I thought this would be kind of the big single off the album. Maybe they intended it to be. But uh, the video itself has got kind of a real, a little bit of a sexy kind of fun party vibe. But uh, so far it hasn't hit as well as some of the other videos. Um, again, I think it, this one's about <laughs> definitely about Lara. When I wake up, I'm next to you. I put a smile on your face. You satisfy my every need. You put an ending to the chase. I, you know, I hate to be a stick in the mud. I can't get past the way he sings medicine. Uh, <laughs> medicine. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm stuck on it. Um, like some people get, you know. Some people you get stuck on things, and I can't get past. It's like, why didn't anybody tap him on the shoulder? Do it once for effect, but it sounds like he doesn't know how the word medicine is pronounced. Anyway, um, yeah, I, yeah, I, I it, it taints the whole experience for me, which is probably equally as stupid. But um, track five, back into my arms again. Well, the first line of the song is time never gone so slowly and that's how i feel the entire song it's just okay. nothing to be desired here for me uh can't get into it you're back to like the vocals sound like they're behind the music i think there's potential musically but they definitely didn't capitalize on it with aces vocals uh, so this is probably the closest we get to a quote-unquote ballad. It's not really a ballad on here, but uh, I like this a little, and I don't want to call it cute, but there's some fun bass slicks in the intro of the song, played by a P.J. Farley. I guess P.J. Farley was bass, or is the bass player for Trickster. He's been in Fozzy. He's played with Eric Martin's solo band. Um, I guess this is a song I can't, quite figure out if the date was it's an old song from i hear them say 1987 but i also hear them say it's been brought up uh, when ace was on tour in 1985 this song was kicking around um and the reason it it uh wound up on this album uh steve brown and, and ace were sitting around uh, and they had a youtube playlist and this song came up and steve's like what's this song and he's kind of recalled where it came from and he's like He's like, we should redo this song, and Ace was all for it. So uh, I think five songs in here, we could be into the happiest Ace album we've ever heard. Yeah, there's there's certainly nothing, you know, there's no pain in the neck on here or anything like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, this song, that, that makes a lot of sense that this song is as old as it is. It was co-written by Ace and Arthur Stead or Steed, S-T-E-A-D. And yeah, there there are a lot of bass demos that floated around in '85 when he before he got a deal with Megaforce, um, and a lot of the songs ended up on, you know, the first Fraley's Comet and the next couple maybe, and then some of them ended up on that Loaded Deck, that compilation. Um, I I'm agreeing with Will. 
Um, I was actually surprised at how melodic this was. It makes sense that this was written in the mid eighties. Yeah. Um, I just wish there'd been another vocalist on it. If this is not Ace's type of song to sing a slow, a slower tempo song. Yeah. I mean, on Ace's solo albums, there aren't really any ballads that I can think of. There really aren't. He, it's not something he's ever done. This is probably the closest. And I think there's potential for a, a really melod. There's a really melodic song here. I just really wish they'd had a different vocalist on it, but I think it's got potential. I wish they'd done something more. Now, I was never a fan, for whatever reason, I was never a fan of Todd Howarth as a vocalist. I just never cared for his. This probably would have been, if this had been on the Fraley's Comet album, he probably would have sang this. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's not bad. I, I just, uh, again, the vocals, you know, I'm going to harp on that a little bit. But uh, anyway, we're, uh, we're up tempo again for Fighting for Life, Will. Uh, this is back to simple and heavier and fun, and I like it. Um, it's entertaining, I think. After the solo, it goes into like the pre-chorus section again. I would have liked to hear the song right out of the solo, which is an enjoyable solo, right into the chorus. Um, but I do like the song, and the outro instrumental bid is like very ace and i think it fits the song well yeah excellent uh as soon as i heard this song for the first time i kind of looked over at my playlist and i had to stream it at first we couldn't find copies of this cd anywhere so my first listen was through streaming i was like oh what's the name of this song the guys are i think the guys are really going to dig this one um this one i'm just looking at the lyrics it's got some of the best lyrics, I think, on the album, and, you know, talking about the whole chain gang and Johnny dropped out when he turned 16. They seem to put a little bit more effort into this song. Uh, I really like the, it's a dirty, filthy rat fire race. Um, yeah, I really like Fighting for Life. This might be my favorite on the album. I think it's Ace's best vocal. I think that oh, yeah. his, the vocal delivery fits perfectly on this uh, i've got no complaints about this song i think this is really really good and yeah i do i do like the little storytelling lyric bit you know it's maybe the only song other than the instrumental that isn't like a love song type of lyric i don't know but um yeah it's really good really strong song next up blinded oh boy <laughs> that wow. acapella intro is horrendous <laughs> i i can't stand that at all it ruins the song because as soon as the chorus starts that's all i can think about and i don't like it um i will give it props it might be my favorite after the acapella thing it might be my favorite song intro on the album like the guitar coming in with the cowbell and then the drums fill in and after it sounds heavy it sounds like it's going to be good and then it isn't um we're kind of is this song about like AI taking over the world? Oh, yeah. maybe. Yeah, it's a about tech. In, interestingly, it's about Ace warning us about technology instead of uh, uh, it's you know, and we don't know which way to go or even who to trust. Technology with no empathy, we're about to lose control. <laughs> Blinded by science. Oh, they couldn't do it. Um, I will say the build up to the solo. And the solo is very good. Uh, I think the solo is probably too short. Personally, I think that could have been extended. It kind of sounds like it gets cut off. Um, but yeah, I think there's good parts of the song. I can't stand the lyrics. I don't like the intro acapella stuff. And Goddess by the Balls, the last line of the song, sounds like something he ripped off from Gene when he wasn't looking. <laughs> Or ACDC. <laughs> or yeah. ACDC. <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad you mentioned the solo. This is actually my favorite solo on the album. Uh, starting at 228 in the song, there's a thing that uh, Gene used to lovingly refer to as the dinosaur bends that Ace does the wow kind of stuff. He does one of those awesome dinosaur bends uh, leading into the solo on Blinded. So I do, I do kind of like the zeros. Buns, rule the world again, but I know what you're talking about. It kind of sounds like a, a Gene Simmons line. Got you by the balls. 
Jim, did you I'm like gonna, this? I'm going to be perfectly honest. Any recollection of how this song goes has gone right out of my head. I can't even think how the song goes right now. Really? Wow. Made that much of an impression on me. Uh, next up, Constantly Cute. Ah. All right, well. <laughs> the song makes me want to puke everywhere. <laughs> Excuse me. This song, like, I don't know. I need, like, the 70s. How do we go from, like, 70s kiss innuendo-based lyrics to this? Like, we're eight years old writing songs. I don't know. I don't like this song. Easily my least favorite. I think we could have probably left this off the album, too. It's not my least favorite, but uh, here we are basically edifying uh, Ace's partner again. <laughs> Girl, you stop traffic. All the boys, they stay. I'm not going to repeat the lyrics. They're terrible. They are super cool. <laughs> uh, your part, though, if you, when you listen to the song again, go right to the two minute and 20 second mark. There's this super weird edit. It goes, girl, you're so sexy. I can't explain the feelings in my mind. It almost sounds like a completely different voice or something. Like he goes down into his deeper voice. It's kind of weird. But uh, yeah, I guess we could probably left that one off the album. Yeah, I agree. I don't I don't like it. Um, it's too it's too cutesy, uh, you know. Uh, it's I, I for the same reason I never liked dolls on the Fraley's first Fraley's Comet album. It's like eh, no, um, I don't know what you'd have to do to successfully pull off a song like this, and I don't think it needs to be tried. So let's move on. Life of a Stranger. Will <sighs> just pick it up, like make it like why the dragon vocals are back. We're slowed way down. It sounds like walking on the moon and back into my arms again in terms of the music's going too fast for Ace to keep up or something. And I find any of the songs like this where it sounds like he's dragging behind, he's also very monotone. Like, I know he doesn't have an insane range, but, like, when your verses and choruses sound the exact same in terms of voice, there's just nothing that's drawing me into it. And I feel that again on this song. I, I'm gonna say, uh, as we're getting close to the end of the album, I do think it finishes strong. Uh, I, I hear what Will is saying. I want you to give it another chance, but there's some interesting uh, elements about this song or actually history about this song. Um, it's actually a cover song from uh, 2002. I don't know how much of it this that you read up on Tim, um, but Apparently, this song was used on the credit, the end credits for the movie The Transporter. It was originally done by a performer called Nadia, and it's kind of like a, a Euro pop song. I listen to it. It's got drum machines. It's very kind of sparse musically. She kind of sounds a little bit like, I would say, Cindy Lauper's Honey Tyler. Um, again, this kind of feels like the, uh, the song lyrics kind of even though he didn't write it it feels like a, a tribute to lara again but uh i find that this is a song that kind of like two, what ace did with 2000 man took a really kind of strange song and made it his own and um i know it's not your favorite will but i, I think give it another chance and i mean at least listen to the other version and you'll see how much that he improved on it um the last the last one minute of this song the the whoa uh, stuff is actually some of my favorite parts of the album where it kind of goes out and Ace does a lot of these wheelie, wheelie, wheelie things at the end and there's some orchestra coming in, but I kind of like how the album is is ending off. So, Tim, what'd you think of that one? I actually like this one, believe it or not. Um, I did not realize it was a cover. It's funny, when I'm looking at it now, yeah, the, the first thing that my eyes drew to was the name Monique. So I thought, oh, his daughter co-wrote this. Isn't yeah. that his daughter? Isn't his daughter's name Monique? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, written by Ferris, Nadia, Mina, Monique, and Wilder Matthew. And um, kind of like, uh, what's the song that he did on Anomaly that was a cover? Um, I think it was Outer, was Outer Space. It was written by, I, I'll tell you, it was the band that originally did it uh one of those guys went into jason newstead's band when he had the band newstead but um 
you know, when it, typically, and, and I and I I really got down on him for this on Origins Volume Two, but typically when Ace does a cover, it's not an obvious one, and this is definitely not an obvious one. I I like this for many of the same reasons I like Back into My Arms again. I probably would have thought that maybe a different vocal would have been better for it, but I did like it, and I'm gonna guess that probably. I don't know whose idea it was to do it, but lyrically, it definitely sounds like something that Ace would have been in the mode of writing. But so there you go. Who, who's, you know, well, you, you yeah. know, it, you never can tell, right? You got to go listen to the original because you're like, how did they get that song? Out of well, that song? you know, you got a you got a point, and and yeah, guys, I remember Matt and I talked about this years ago, like back in the '90s, like before the, you could just go on YouTube before YouTube was a thing. He had listened to the the original version of uh 2000 man by the rolling stones and he said i never thought i'd say this but ace is a genius because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he found a good song in there anyway next up uh the last vocal track on here up in the sky well i like this song i think we're kind of ending strong here after the last song getting like new york groove vibes from the guitar ah. through Throughout most of it, I'm hearing bits of the New York Groove intro, which is fun because that's a great song. Yep. Um, and at the beginning, there's like a very thick Gene bass slide thing happening, which I don't know if that's related or if that was meant to be a throw. I don't know. Um, this album... In terms of a lot of the new albums we talked about, we get into the sameness. Everything sounds the same, with different lyrics. I think Ace did really good. Not making, like all the sounds, all the songs sound very unique. There's not many guitar riffs that sound the same. I think he did well there. Although the chorus of this reminds me of Constantly Cute. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, but I like this song. But when he says in the chorus, I can't trust the news. Every yeah. time that's coming up, I just want to go constantly cute. I, <laughs> yeah, because he also says girl in this chorus as well, too. <laughs> yeah, so there's some similarities there. Most of the album is very unique from one song to the next, but sounds like it fits in the same album. Um, but yeah, I like this song. Um. So this is, uh, interestingly, the longest song on the album comes in at uh, four minutes and 30 seconds. And I think what, what Will pointed out, like how all the songs have a slightly different kind of feel. Now we've got Matt Starr on drums, so that probably contributes a bit to a little bit of the different feel from the other songs. Um, so here we are, Up in the Sky, um, not a song about Lara. There's a song about Ace talking about UFOs, and he saw UFOs and someone doesn't believe him. Uh, they're up in the sky, girl. I know what I saw. You can't trust the news and you can't trust the law. Was it fact? Maybe I can't deny. Are we alone? Just screw it. I think I'll just say good night. So <laughs> he knows he saw what he saw. Uh, um, I really, um, uh, just a couple of things, Tim. I, I like the subtle kind of, there's some acoustic guitar strums behind the chorus here, like filling out the album. I think there's some more acoustic stuff on this album, just to, uh, doesn't stand out as much as here. Um, it does have another one of my favorite solos. It's not my favorite one, but about 240 into this song. Um, it's not a flashy solo, but it stays around for a good 45 seconds. So a nice, fairly decently long A solo. And then, of course, it has to end with that classic. 1950s UFO woo, kind of flying away sound. So yeah, I really liked Up in the Sky. Um, yeah, I agree with you guys. I liked it, but I, I do I do hear the similarities with Constantly Cute. I'd be curious to know which of those songs came first. It's almost like wrote one of them and then maybe Steve Brown said, I think you got another song idea here and where maybe it was more like you got one and a half songs worth of ideas here. But uh, I do like this one better of the two. And usually the better is the first, the one that came first, and then the, the, uh, the next one is the leftovers. So it might be the other way around. And of course, we wind up with an instrumental stratosphere. I'm glad that Ace keeps the instrumental theme at the end of each album. Um, 
I think this is the best one since Fracture 2, probably, at least in my opinion. Um, I think Stratosphere is a much cooler th name than Quantum Flux or Fractured Quantum. I think those both suck in terms of a name. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's an ace album. Like, what more were you expecting than a cool, spacey outro instrumental piece? So, yeah, nailed it well. It's a nice three minute instrumental. I was looking at the credits, and this is just actually Ace, and I think Ace and then Steve play drums and pretty much everything else on, on this instrumental. I like that it's not really complicated. It's got lots of little, what we call harmonics and arpeggiated chords. It's got some of those acoustic guitars, and he rips into what I would say is like a, almost like a Jimmy Page-ish esque kind of solo that I really love on here. Um, I wrote down here, it says uh, 255. It sounds like it was just going to, this song was almost going to continue, maybe go beyond the three minutes and really rip off into another whole section. But then the album just kind of quietly ends. And um, just one thing I wanted to say, my last note on this, I wouldn't actually mind hearing, oh, we're, we've been talking about uh, Ace's vocals maybe aren't up to snuff in, in some regards. I actually don't mind them so much, but I wouldn't mind hearing an all instrumental Ace album. What do you guys think? That's a cool idea. I mean, yeah, he might he he might be able to get, get a deal with one of those guitar album. Well, I don't think relativity exists anymore, but if something like that and just deliver an all instrumental album, yeah, that I that's think... a cool idea. I, I'd be into that. I think for him to be able to pull that off, he's got to kind of stretch his wings and get out of this spacey yes. thing. Because a yeah, full he's, he's got to have he's got to have some help with the titles. But speaking of titles, full... I do like the title Stratosphere. I'm glad it's not Fractured Five or whatever you know wherever we're at now, because uh, I think it holds its own as a song. And all in all, um, despite all my moaning and groaning about you know Ace and the press, did he deliver a masterpiece? No. Did he better anything that Kiss has done in the last few years? No. Did he put it a decent album? Yeah, he put he put between he and Steve Brown and the brain trust behind this. He put out a decent album. And quite honestly, I think this is better than Space Man. I think it's better than Space Invader. Um, you know, the Origins albums are covers albums, so they don't really count. But and uh, it might be better than Anomaly. I mean, it's 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 an entertaining album, you know, um, uh, I don't mind it at all. I that don't sound like a lukewarm review, but I was all ready to trash it when it was first announced. So there you go. I've softened my approach. I think I got enough of my trashing in. I stand by what I say for everything that I hated on. Um, I like about half the album. I think it's half good and half very not good. Um, but the songs that are good are good. I think it wipes Spaceman. I think Spaceman was significantly worse than this. Um, I do like Space Invader more, but this is probably better than Anomaly to me. Um, one cool thing, I don't have the album yet. I might get it. I probably won't. But on the cover, he's wearing a Space Invader t-shirt. I noticed that, yeah. Which, cool. But, yeah. That's what I think, anyway. It's just okay. But good for Ace. Yeah, on, these, on this last bunch of albums, so... I was looking at the credits on here. Uh, this anomaly came out on Bronx Born Records. All the rest of them came out on E1 Music. Yeah, this now, is a different label. Yeah, so what it is, Tim, actually, E1 is turned into MNRK, which they pronounce as Monarch. So oh, that, okay. So I guess it's still the same label, but just under a different name. Um, I think it's probably my favorite that he's done of this whole this whole bunch. I do like the Origins records. Uh, I think probably Anomaly would have been my favorite before that. I would like to find this on vinyl, but even more, I kind of want to look for that lenticular cover version. I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff, so I don't know if I just like shiny things, but you know, just having it and you can kind of turn it and the spaceships appear and disappear, so if I can find one of those Walmart exclusives or anyone knows where I can get one for less than, you know, yeah. 30 or 
so there you go, folks. That is uh, that's our two cents. For take it for what it's worth. It's just our opinions on the latest Ace Freely album, Ten Thousand Volts. Um, and we do want to make an announcement that we have some new merchandise available on our T Public page. Uh, if you go to just tpublic.com slash user slash Tim Smile Confessions, uh, we've got some 10th anniversary merchandise because, yes, uh, 2024 marks 10 years uh, since I've been doing this. And Matt and Will have been along almost the whole time. And uh, we certainly appreciate everybody that's come along, you know, along the way and watched. But, yeah, there's some really cool merchandise. Uh, there's also some merchandise for Matt's company, Go North Design. Please check that out. Um, as always, uh, my books are available at Amazon. Got some news that I'm not quite ready to share with people yet, but we do have some exciting things coming up. And and uh, don't forget, folks, don't just hit that subscribe button. Smash it, fresh it, hit it. <laughs> hit that subscribe button because uh, there's a lot of folks that are watching these videos that haven't subscribed yet. So please do. It helps the channel out, helps us grow the channel. And we want to thank everybody. I know there's going to be so, so, so very many opinions out there because we KISS fans, we're crazy with a K. We know that. So, uh, yeah. What do you think of the new Ace album? Let us know in the comments. And thanks, everybody, for watching Tim's Vinyl Confessions. And uh, we will see you later on Jendel or somewhere else.